This is lecture two for Introduction to Ethics, and today we are going to get started with a well-known hypothetical ethical dilemma, one that ethicists frequently discuss and debate, and then we'll end our discussion with a real-life case study. Both the hypothetical and the real-life case study will provide content for your group discussions. And so to get started, I want to attempt to answer a basic question, and that is, why would we study ethics academically? Well, the answer is not so that you can become more ethical. This class is not designed to change your moral values, uh, the values that you already have, uh, and it's not to help you necessarily become a more ethical person. Rather, this class is designed to help you articulate, critique, and even defend the underlying principles that shape your values, as well as the principles that shape the values of society as a whole. And so to do this, oftentimes what ethicists do is they look at hypothetical ethical dilemmas, um, such as a dilemma known as the trolley problem. So on your screen you can see a picture um, of a guy standing at a switch. Well, in this hypothetical situation, you are this guy. And so what you have to figure out in this ethical dilemma is uh, the story goes that a trolley cart is going down the tracks and the trolley cart is actually heading for these five innocent bystanders who are tied to the tracks. Um, now, if you ask the question, how did they get there? Um, all we need to know for this hypothetical situation is they got there by no fault of their own. Um, it was unlucky circumstances that they got tied to the tracks. And so you now, as somebody who's walking by, have a situation to flip the switch and then you can actually make the trolley cart go down another path so that these five lives will be saved. Well, the only problem is that if you flip the switch, there is somebody tied to another track, only one person this time rather than five, and by flipping the switch, you will have saved five lives, but unfortunately, um, one life will perish as a result. So the question is, what is the ethical thing to do? Um, and even more fundamental, what ethical principles might help you make this decision? Well, oftentimes when I, when I pose this question to a live class, um, students will uh, discuss this problem, and usually the principle that is brought up is known as the utilitarian principles. Now, typically students don't know that they're uh, bringing up the utilitarian principle, but the, the principle states simply that for each person who is on the track, their lives is worth, we might say, one unit. So each life is equally valuable, but if you add up the five lives, they, in total, equal five units. Whereas the person on the other track is just as equally valuable as everyone else, but since there's only one person on the other track, uh, that person is worth one unit. So on the one hand, you have five units versus one unit. And so the utilitarian principle says, when it comes to making ethical decisions, um, such as an unfor unfortunate decision such as this, it is always better to value more lives than less lives. Um, to state the principle another way, the utilitarian principle says we ought to do whatever makes the most amount of people happy, or we could say whatever reduces the suffering for the most amount of people. And so if we use this utilitarian principle, then we might say that the ethical decision is to flip the switch and it would take the life of one person, uh, but it would save the lives of five people and five lives are greater than one. Well, most students will typically answer this way. There are sometimes uh, a few students who might dissent and they don't agree with that approach um, to ethics. Um, but there seems to be a problem after you adopt this utilitarian principle. And that problem is, if we change the situation, and now you're this guy again, but the situation is slightly different. Uh, you still have five people, innocent bystanders, who are tied to the track. Um, but this time, there is a different way to save those five lives. It involves pushing a large man off the bridge. 
And we know for this hypothetical situation that if we do this, we will save five lives. Now what's interesting about this situation is when I pull students when it comes to flipping the switch, most students will readily adopt the utilitarian principle and they'll say it's better to save five lives at the expense of one. But when you change the situation to this scenario where you have to push someone off a bridge to save five lives, most student, students intuitively feel like this is wrong. And so we have to at, answer the question, what makes these situations different? What happened to our utilitarian principle? Do we still try to hold on to it? Do we have to nuance the principle? These are the questions that we're trying to answer in ethics. And so why do we study ethics? Because we want to learn to make proper distinctions. Ethics is simply thinking hard and precisely about moral issues. And so what a hypothetical situation like a trolley cart, the problem of the trolley cart brings up, is it helps to highlight the principles that we're using to make ethical decisions. And in one situation, the utilitarian principle might seem appropriate, but in another situation, uh, it doesn't seem as appropriate. And so what ethics does is it forces us to make distinctions between the facts of a situation and the principles informing our moral judgments. And so as we learn to make these distinctions, uh, the hope is that we will fine-tune our principles so that they apply across um, a broad range of situations and not just a select few um, situations. But another reason to study ethics is because it helps us to become more empathetic and it helps us to understand other perspectives. Uh, this semester, as mentioned in your syllabus, we are going to cover a wide range of controversial issues. And one of the reasons why we cover these controversial issues is because these are typically the issues that matter in society. Uh, so we could spend our whole semester talking about uh, things that aren't necessarily relevant to society, um, but those things would, would make for a boring class uh, where we can certainly learn about principles, um, but we won't know how those principles apply. By talking about controversial issues, the hope is that this class will be more relevant um, and more useful as it comes to bringing these principles into the real world. Uh, so this semester we will cover um, topics like religion and politics. Um, what is the relationship between religion and politics? And we'll talk about whether or not there's such thing as neutrality when it comes to um, entering into the public sphere and having uh, public debates over moral and social issues. Uh, we'll talk about things like, should we redistribute wealth? We'll talk about gun control, affirmative action, abortion, hate speech versus free speech, same-sex marriage, euthanasia, Obamacare, discerning discrimination, uh, when are we discriminating versus um, when are we just disagreeing, immigration, gender equality, and sexuality. Um, so this list is bound to bring up disagreements in this class. And I do want to say that, that I think disagreement is good um, in this class. Um, but I want to make sure that as we're writing on our discussion posts that we disagree with respect um, and that we do it for the purpose of trying to understand principles and empathize with one another um, and not necessarily just to um, make each other feel bad. We want to make sure that we are very respectful in the way we disagree in this class. But I want to say that it's okay to disagree over these things um, because talking about these things um, bring out important ethical principles that we need to consider when we go into the public sphere. And so one of the studies that we're going to begin with this week is a case study um, covering a debate over discrimination versus religious liberty. So under the content tab on D2L, you will find links to videos that provide background to this particular case study. And so just to summarize right now, Aaron and Melissa Klein are bakers, or at least they were bakers in Portland, Oregon, and they started a business called Sweet Cakes by Melissa. Now, part of their business involved baking wedding cakes, and they faced a significant amount of controversy a couple years ago when they refused to bake a wedding cake for a same-sex couple. 
Now, this particular case study brings up a real-life ethical dilemma between the ethics of discrimination versus the ethics of religious liberty. By refusing to serve the same-sex couple, some have argued that the bakers refuse to respect the basic civil rights of the couple. And for this reason, the couple eventually filed a complaint against Sweet Cakes by Melissa, and in April 2015, an administrative court made a decision to fine Sweet Cakes $135,000 for discrimination. Well, as a result, they were forced to eventually close their bakery. And then there was an interesting twist in the story uh, when Aaron and Melissa tried to raise money to pay for their fines. And so they opened up a GoFundMe account, and the couple was actually able to raise most of the money before GoFundMe eventually suspended their page because it violated a GoFundMe policy which prohibits their services from being used to fund projects or causes that promote discrimination. And so the question that I want you to discuss in your groups is if Aaron and Melissa are required to modify their wedding policy, and so they cite religious reasons for why they have their policy, if they're required to modify their wedding po policy to serve the couple, then we might ask, should GoFundMe be required to modify their discrimination policy to serve Aaron and Melissa? Is there a difference in these situations? This is what I want you to discuss with your groups. Now, as you're discussing this, keep in mind some possible legislation um, that you could enact. And I want you to pretend, um, for our purposes, that you have the power to enact legislation that would provide guidance in cases like this. So on the one hand, you could enact legislation that would protect the bakers. Well, if you support this idea, then the question that you need to answer is, do you think protecting the bakers would promote discrimination against same-sex couples? Then I want you to explain your answer. On the other hand, you could also enact legislation that protects the couple. Well, if you support this idea, then you need to answer, would it support discrimination against those with conservative religious convictions? And I'd like you to explain your answer. Because what the Aaron and Melissa Klein case demonstrates is that regardless of how you answer these types of questions, all of us have moral opinions, and all of us make moral judgments. And those judgments have real-life implications for other people living in our society. The big question for ethics, then, is how do we make moral decisions and judgments in such a way that we promote true justice in society? Or we maybe even have to figure out if there is such a thing as true justice. These are the questions that we will consider throughout the semester. And so why do we study ethics? Well, the reason why we study ethics is because we have this conviction, at least ethicists have this conviction, that somebody has already invented the wheel. And when it comes to the actual wheel, the physical wheel, we can, we can see it, it's physical, it's tangible. Therefore, when it comes to manufacturing cars, we don't need to go back to square one and reinvent the wheel again. So to save time, we can just use the wheel that's already been invented and then improve on it. Well, the same is true when it comes to studying ethics. When left to our own devices, without studying the great thinkers throughout history, we find ourselves making the same mistakes that have always been made before. And our goal in ethics is to avoid these mistakes by seeing which principles have already been proposed, which principles have been critiqued, nuanced, and defended, and then hopefully after seeing what has already been invented in the realm of ideas, in the realm of ethics, then we can build upon those principles. This is why we study ethics. Not necessarily to change our values, but to better understand them in their most persuasive form so that eventually we can build upon them.